So I think we can start. I see that many participants are joining. So good morning or good afternoon, everyone, and welcome from the EU IOM Knowledge Management Hub, the Hub on Return Migration and Sustainable Reintegration. So for those of you joining our public events for the first time, the exchange we will have today is part of a set of webinars aiming to present specific return and reintegration practices and to encourage knowledge and experience sharing. So welcome again. So before we start, before we start, let me share with you some technical indication about this webinar. The most important is that simultaneous interpretation is available in English and French. You can click the logo in the black bar at the bottom of your Zoom page to select the preferred language channel to follow the event. If you have any technical problem, please don't hesitate to contact us at the email address you find on the screen. Please feel free to ask your questions through the chat. They will be collected and addressed during the question and answer after the speaker's presentation. As a last point, this webinar will be recorded and made available in the return and reintegration platform. So today we will present a series of lessons from the innovative practice of medical return and reintegration, and more specifically from the pilot scheme for assisted voluntary return from France to Georgia, funded by the French Office for Immigration and Integration. The project offers safe and dignified return and includes the provision of medical support before and during travel, as well as post-arrival medical reintegration assistance. As you see from this, from this slide, 80 medical cases assisted, 100 accompanying family members, medical reintegration up to six months, and evidence-based lessons learned. These are a few info and facts about this initiative, which is also being captured as a regional good practice in our latest AVRR Key Highlight 2021, which is available for consultation in the repository of the Return and Reintegration Platform. So I quickly introduce myself. My name is Francesco Giassi, and I'm very pleased to welcome you today. Uh, I work as Knowledge Management Officer at the Knowledge Management Hub, funded by the European Union and implemented by UM through its protection division. So we are very pleased to share with you today different voices and experiences on this practice. We will have Dr. Leluong, head of the medical department at the French Office for Immigration and Integration, OFI, who will help us to set the frame and share a few considerations on this pilot project. Following their interventions, colleagues from the IOM offices in Georgia and France will guide us through the experiences in the implementation of this practice. We will hear the voice of a returnee through a short video, and the colleagues from Switzerland and Germany will tell us more about the complementarities with other existing projects. Last but definitely not the least, we will hear from a medical esc escort, Dr. Yashvili, who will help us to better understand the lessons and the challenge encountered. And after these interventions, with the help of colleagues from IOM France, we will move to the interactive session where we will ask panelists to address the questions that you will kindly share with us during the webinar. So let's start our conversation. It's a great honor to having with us today, Dr. Leluong. She's been managing the medical service of OFI since 2015, and she oversees all medical activities for migrants who benefit from OFI support. She has an extensive experience in development, implementation, and evaluation of public health policy. And Dr. Leluong today will tell us more about this pilot project, the collaborations built and the needs identified in Georgia. So please, Dr. Leluang, the floor is yours. Thank you, Francesco. Uh, can you hear me correctly? I can hear yes. you very well. Okay, so I will speak in French. Huh? Sure. Uh, well, first of all, I would like to thank all the organizers that have managed to organize very well this uh, webinar session et qui me fait l'honneur donc de faire l'ouverture pour vous présenter la genèse de cette expérimentation menée avec l'Office international des migrations. That we organize with the OFII. 
Donc, depuis la levée des visas en 2017, pour les ressortissants georgiens souhaitant se rendre dans l'un des de l'espace Schengen, on a constaté une très forte augmentation des demandes d'asile et de l'immigration, notamment un abus sanitaire dans les pays of, de l'Union uh, européenne. Um, en 2019, uh, donc avant la pandémie area. de Covid, so in 2019, on a estimé que 20 000 Thousand Georgians had uh, made an application for asylum. Most of them in France because they were looking for quality and free medical services. In France, les préfets in France, the prefects et l'OFI reçoivent des signalements de services hospitaliers qui sont en tension face à une forte demande de soins de la part des ressortissants georgiens, en particulier dans certains services. Il y a beaucoup de médicaments de la part des ressortissants en décembre 2019, l'Office international de migration et l'ambassade de France à Tbilisi ont organisé une conférence internationale avec les pays de l'espace européen sur l'impact dans l'Union européenne du régime d'exemption des visas en Georgie pour étendre les visas georgiennes. Il était en effet devenu nécessaire d'une part, d'analyser la dynamique et les raisons de la migration sanitaire, ainsi que celle de la sanitaire immigration, ainsi que celle de l'asile immigration, mais aussi d'autre part de prendre en considération les demandes d'asile débutées et néanmoins porteurs de vulnérabilité mais qui étaient vulnérables d'un point de vue médical. Puis en 2020, en accord avec l'ambassade de France en Georgie et l'ambassade de l'Ambassade de Georgie en France, une mission médicale de l'OFI menée par le directeur général de l'OFI, l'OFI, c'est la diapositive que vous pouvez voir, The slide number one that you can see. Et qui a associé donc des, des responsables has indeed associated des uh, medical directors from the uh, regions the hospital and took place from the 11th up to the 14th of February 2020 The purpose of this mission was to meet the House Minister uh, in Georgia, most of the hospital services as well as the multilateral players so that we could fine-tune our collaboration in particular focusing on the re, uh, Georgian readmissions that came to France in order to benefit from the French health service who had made application for a permit, um, resident permit for health care. En effet, il existe un dispositif particulier à Indeed, la France, celui France, des demandes de titre is, de séjour pour soins. A specific sector called a medical uh, resident permit. Lorsque l'étranger, qui en principe uh, doit résider depuis plus d'un an en France, est porteur d'une maladie qui nécessite des soins. Et si l'absence de ces soins entraînerait pour lui des conséquences d'une exceptionnelle gravité à court terme, et s'il ne peut pas accéder à ces soins dans son pays d'origine. Et s'il ne peut pas accéder à ces soins dans son pays d'origine. Sur cette diapositive, vous pouvez voir quelques Here, chiffres. Here, you can see several figures. Entre le 1er janvier 2017 so et le 30 of septembre 2022, we can see donc on a euh, recensé 30 273 demandes d'asile de euh, ressortissants georgiens qui uh, se placent dans la cinquième position. Um, applications from Georgian that are the fifth nationality nous among uh, asylum seekers. And we've also registered more than 6,000 uh, applications for um, des demandes resident permits for health reasons. <coughs> Donc, 84 plus de 84% so here we're talking sont des adultes, about 48% of adults, more than a third are women. Et le le pourcentage d'avis favorable est d'environ 43% the favorable opinion represent 43% as an average i would say les principales pathologies euh, the main pathologies are the sont des troubles mentaux et du comportement 
à hauteur de 17%. Oui, si uh, 17% are due to mental and behavioral disorders, à, à la moyenne des which demandes is des more than the national average. From, uh, les maladies infectieuses comptent pour uh, près de 15%. Infectious disease represent 15%. Et les cancers pour and cancers, uh, à peu près 30, uh, 13%. 13% of the applications. Il faut savoir, là, vous avez euh, la cartographie euh, par densité de demandes. On the next slide, you see the mapping de of the, the map of the applications intensity for um, health cares. Alors, il faut savoir que les demandes de titre de séjour pour soins ne sont pas exclusives. Euh, you have to understand that these applications are not exclusive. Nombre de Georgiens faisant uh, appel au système de soins français. We don't only have uh, Georgians here represented. On the Ainsi, map. dans les suites de, de ces rencontres au plus haut niveau, l'OFI a travaillé avec l'Office international de migration pour mettre en place une expérimentation pour créer une expérimentation pour un médical assisté de volontaire retour en réintégration avec un médical assistant et un soutien financier pour les soins médicaux quand ils sont de retour dans leur pays d'origine. Voilà donc la, la genèse de ce so projet. This is the genesis et, of the project, euh, and uh, les uh, now I let the other panelists develop what happened within the project. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much, Dr. Lelwang. Just to confirm that your presentation is uh, is concluded. Can you hear me, Dr. Lelwang? Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. So, uh, thank you so much for for setting the frame of this conversation and for describe the rationale behind this very interesting um, intervention. So now we move to the key lessons from the project. So uh, colleagues from the IUM offices that have been at the forefront of design and implementation of this initiative will share with us the key lessons that have been captured from the different phases of the project from the pre-departure to the post-arrival support. So over to you, Chloe and Natia. Thank you, Francesco, for this introduction. I will also be speaking in French, so for participants to turn on the translation if need be. So we will be the two of us to make this, this presentation because we are really working in collaboration. Um, there is a strong collaboration between the France, uh, the French team and the Georgian team. So I will talk about the upstream activity and Natia will share the uh, downstream um, activities. So the proper medical reintegration. So here we're going to share with you the first lessons that we could draw from the uh, experiment and the implementation of the project. As Francesco said at the beginning of the webinar, uh, there was uh, uh, there's been an assessment at the beginning of the project. We are assisting the first departures back to Georgia, and the uh, medical reinsertion will be happening till the end of December this year. So the reports that we will produce after the assessment will enable us to have a better uh, analysis and to make some recommendation. So now I'll start with the pre-departure assistance. So summarizing, I would say that our work uh, on this uh, first phase was to uh, inform the Georgian community about the existence of the program and how it worked. There was a French-Georgian uh, uh, cultural mediator or counselor who was with us today, and she was working with each applicant in Georgian so they can understand how the program uh, was working and to uh, prepare the projects from the first contact up to the departure. 
There's a strong liaison work between the treating physician, the IOM coordinator, and the colleagues that are in Georgia that are actually ensuring availability of treatment in Georgia and that also prepare continuum of care with health professionals in Georgia. We also organized the logistic aspects of the project in land transportation to airport that includes ambulance as well as um, escorts and uh, all needed for colleagues to uh, to uh, to get organized, stretchers and so on. And we have a collaboration with the Charles de Gaulle Airport to make sure that everything works uh, fine for all mobility applic um, applicants that have mobility issues. A few key statistics to share with you. Unfortunately, we cannot get further into details, but I am at your disposal uh, if you have any questions. The project was launched on the 1st of April 2021 up to the 30th of September 2022. We've assisted 172 applicants that had medical uh, requirements. So it's the first lesson because 79 people went back uh, to Georgia indeed by the end of September. So we have two and a half application per month, basically, uh, with all uh, implied, which means translation, etc. what I referred to. So here on the first graph, you see that uh, a few um, applicants died, unfortunately, before they could came back. Other uh, didn't want to go back, so they withdrawn. And other applicants who to which to whom we said that we needed a month to get organized for their return uh, decided to come back uh, alone on their own uh, intention. If we look at the profiles, we can make a comparison or with this, the, the figures that have been shared by the Dr. Le Lyon, um, we didn't have a majority of people that were suffering from mental uh, disorders. We see that most of the applicants were suffering from uh, chronic, uh, stable chronic diseases, such as uh, um, heart uh, failures or um, kidneys uh, failures. We also had a high number of applications who were in terminal phases of their cancers. So we could draw six lessons uh, that we would like to share with you within this pre-departure phase. So the first lesson was that there's a need for close accompaniment and follow-up because this public has a uh, uh, really specific needs. Uh, we are talking about mobility issues as well as psychological distress. And uh, we see that we're talking about isolated and vulnerable persons. We've assisted persons who were uh, severely ill and had difficulties to eat, to get dressed. So we're talking about basic needs. Second lessons for the serious cases, so the stretchers or the terminal cases, we see that we needed well-managed coordination between a broad range of stakeholders. So here I'm talking airlines that have their own medical services, medical escorts, medical teams in the country of return, and in our case, the uh, local offices of the OFII with which we worked on each application. Third lesson, depending on the beneficiary's profile, we saw that some needed more, uh, more comprehensive reintegration assistance. So it meant medical assistance, but also social or professional assistance. I think that one of the cases that was really uh, important was uh, a man who was um, severely ill and came back from France with uh, 
mobility issues and he sold everything he had in Georgia to come to France to get uh, medical care. So when he came back to Georgia, he needed uh, some money to buy himself a bed. I mean, basic commodities. So here it wasn't just about medical assistance, but also about financial assistance. Point suivant, donc dans le contexte français, nous avons travaillé avec plus d'une... Another lesson within the French context, we've worked with more than 100 different uh, physicians and we realized that we needed a constant support from the treating uh, physicians who need to do all the admin uh, work that is required in parallel. So it requires a lot of work. It wasn't always easy for some physician with whom we've, we've been working. Pour lesquels that had also to deal with the other patients, of course. But for us, it was uh, vital to be able to organize the returns. We also needed an access to specialists for some applicants who were uh, living in small villages or small cities in France. And it was difficult for us to have uh, this access to uh, specialists that were required for stabilization before departure. I'm talking about here about uh, heart failures or heart um, disorders. Voilà donc pour les, les quelques leçons que nous avons sélectionnées encore. So une these fois. are the few lessons learned. Uh, I could uh, probably speak for. 20 minutes uh, more, but I will now give the floor to my colleague Natia, who will now share with you the post-arrival lessons learned. Thanks, Chloe. Good morning, colleagues. Good morning, participants. Thanks for attending the meeting. And now I'll overview the post-arrival medical integration assistance. Um, as you can see from this slide, out of uh, 79 assisted cases, we had uh, scheduled medical escorts for 44 cases, and it's more than a half. These escorts were provided for medical cases which required special conditions during the um, travel. Out of these uh, 44 escort cases, seven were stretcher cases. The first stretcher case was organized in 2021 and the other six in 2022. Uh, based on medical condition and requirements, IOM Georgia provided reception and secondary transportation to final destination by ambulance for 12 cases. Uh, very often, especially for the migrants who lived in different regions of Georgia, families were not able to meet them at the airport. So far, uh, relatively light medical cases, reception and secondary transportation was scheduled and provided by taxi. You can see that uh, we have 40 ongoing cases. Many cases returned in 2022 and especially after June. Uh, a couple of cases are in old cases, I'm talking about ongoing cases, who exceptionally received exp extension for their eligibility period, which is six months upon uh, their arrival to Georgia. Uh, I have to mention that we are still processing new cases because these uh, numbers are given for the end of September. Okay, next slide, please. Now about the challenges which are very important. Uh, state medical insurance coverage is very limited in Georgia. It covers only basic and general needs and emergency services. We have cases with chronic diseases and their medical costs are not covered by the state medical insurance. Maybe in future there will be a project oriented on advocacy with the state institution, institutions for expanding coverage of state medical insurance. But this project has to be implemented, implemented by a medical uh, staff uh, with medical background and uh, also project on advocacy wider coverage of the state insurance will need years, I think. 
logistical constraints of persons with disabilities to access services. This is very important because somehow Georgia is not well adapted country for uh, the persons with disabilities. Even some medical institutions have not relevant infrastructure. Uh, the same goes to schools and educational institutions. Um, for receiving disability status and some free services, the person has to make uh, to collect medical documents, uh, for example, medical certificate, and make relevant registration. The regist registration has to be done in big cities, which is also very challenging for the person with disabilities. Even if the person is living in Tbilisi, the transportation is a big challenge. Some medication are not available in Georgia. As part of our pre-departure uh, assistance, we are receiving uh, information about uh, the prescribed medications if they are to check if they are available in Georgia. So if they are not in, available in Georgia, um, uh, we can make a special order, individual order, but based on um, provided medical certificate and it can be uh, imported in Georgia. But, and we had similar cases, but um, in 2022, the situation has changed because now Georgia is officially importing medications from Turkey. So person can't make individual order anymore, but this does not uh, refer to the medications for oncological um, patients. Uh, direct payments uh, to the uh, medical institutions after provision of services. This is very challenging, especially outside of Georgia. It's outside of Tbilisi. I am Georgia established cooperation with some multi-profile uh, clinics, mainly located in Tbilisi, which agrees to assist our beneficiaries and invoice us instead of uh, patients paying for the services. Such agreements were based on our long-term cooperation. Uh, in the regions, however, this process is going slowly as IOM has to establish new contacts in some uh, uh, instances. However, the beneficiaries refer to travel to Tbilisi for medical treatment uh, in any case, as, uh, the, as sometimes this particular treatment is available only in Tbilisi. Mm, this was about the challenges and next slide please uh, now about good practices and lessons learned to post arrival medical reintegration assistance. As I already mentioned, it's very important when we have some partnership established with medical institutions where uh, our colleagues can make a schedule the different medical services for our beneficiaries and they don't have to pay their money and wait for a it's about medical consultations, uh, different medical procedures, uh, medical tests, and even uh, surgeries. Uh, escort movements. Um, uh, pool of Georgian escorts expanded to accommodate needs of beneficiaries. Uh, we have two uh, emergency care doctors. We have two psychiatric escorts. We have two junior doctors and one pediatric doctor. And it's very important for our project. Purchase of prescribed medications in pharmacies. As I already, as I already mentioned, uh, we can make uh, orders, but now only about the uh, oncological medications, but we have a relationship with different uh, pharmac pharmacies, network of pharmacies in Georgia, where we can order the stock of medications which are available in Georgia and provide returnees with these prescribed medications, which is also very comfortable for our beneficiaries and medical cases. Drafting contracts for paramedical, paramedical personnel for home care. The process is eased by special contract with uh, paramedics. And this uh, issue is very important for the medical case in their family members. It especially goes to severe and terminal cases where they are able to hire some medical staff for day care or night care. 
immediate inclusion of substitution treatment. So this goes to methadone substitution treatment, subotic substitution treatment, and uh, dialysis substitution treatment. And we have relationship with different official institutions where we can um, make um, uh, uh, inclusion of these beneficiaries upon their arrival based on provided pre-departure information and uh, relevant document, provision of relevant documentation. Liaison with families in Georgia, which is very important because I'm the person who is in contact with the family members prior to their departure. And uh, it's uh, very import important to uh, provide some um, smooth inclusion of uh, in different substitution programs, uh, different medical, urgent medical follow-ups and safe return. Thanks, that was all. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Chloe and Natia, for this comprehensive information and reflections. I would like maybe to highlight something to your attention, which is the um, importance of partnerships uh, in all the phases of the project, uh, as we, we have heard from colleagues, uh, among different actors and institutions, and indeed crucial to ensure a successful and smooth medical return and reintegration process. So we cannot have a proper understanding of this initiative without hearing from the returnees' voice themselves. So we can display now a short video, a short video for, for you. We can launch the video. Chamishus <laughs> Mimidodaro, Chemishuls, that will be a drebi, Mindodaro, Mishulepta, the Shulishulepta, Popiliko. Bashoptan Ertoba, Bashoptan Utiat Contacti Alps Arar Sebulia, Iseti Dahmareba, Rats Dahmareba Gamitia met Quenma organizats. Memadlovis Mediara Perial met Miss Rochemishuli of Nebeli. So thank you, thank you for your attention. We can now move to other similar medical return projects which have been implemented, complementary to the pilot one. And for this, we have with us today Two colleagues from IUM. We start from Nasli from IUM Bern. Nasli is covering different regions as AVRR operation assistant, and she has extensive experience in legal protection in the federal asylum centers in Switzerland, as well as in several international NGOs. Nasli, the floor is yours. Francesco, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much to all the um, people being present, and thank you for the interesting presentation so far. I will quickly talk about, I'm Switzerland. Uh, I will uh, talk about pre-departure counseling, about the reintegration assistance from Switzerland, the return information fund, and about the movements program. And uh, then I will shortly explain um, the challenges that we face so far. So I am Switzerland has I am counselors in the federal asylum centers. That means we have direct counseling, uh, which is provided by the counselors in five different uh, federal asylum centers. And IOM office, that means we are coordinating uh, the cases with IOM Georgia and different partners and all the counselors in the federal asylum centers. Um, in order to prepare uh, the returns, the counselors can um, 
ask us return related questions, um, which we call RIF. It's basically an information gathering system, uh, which we call Swiss Return Information Fund. Um, here they ask us return related question. It could be related to a treatment in Georgia, as Natia explained in a detailed way. It could be regarding a project and so on. Um, this is important to show you in the chart um, that the RIF questions are, for example, in uh, 2018, we have 33 questions. Out of 33 questions, we have 25 medical related questions. Same we can also see in 2019, here we had out of 50 questions, we had 46 uh, medical related questions. So overall, we see that the questions are mainly medical. Um, so the, the questions are ma mainly uh, medical related questions. Um, the questions can be also regarding their integration assistance, which they are provided, provided in kind by IOM Georgia. Um, if before I talk about uh, the reintegration assistance, it's maybe also important to know that Switzerland and Georgia have a visa-free policy, which started already 28th of March, 2017. Um, so Switzerland is therefore actually not granting normal reintegration uh, mandates anymore, but only medical uh, related and hardship cases. Basically, cash for care or housing are only granted if there is um, a hardship case or a medical component to it. Before the visa free policy, um, there was mainly more grants for business projects. And if we check here the numbers in uh, 2018, for example, we had 19 um, reintegration assistance. Out of them, uh, 18 were medical assistance. Also in 2019, we have out of 27 reintegration assistance grants, we have 24 uh, medical assistance. So here again, we can see clearly the, the assistance which was provided was mainly medical. Maybe it's also important to mention that um, as Natya basically said, talked about the substance abuse program, that uh, the substance abuse cases are referred to IOM Georgia for ins inscription to the substance abuse program, which is covered under the movement program. I will quickly talk about the movements program as well. Um, the IOM movements um, program is um, basically we do the flight booking in-house uh, for all medical returns worldwide. Uh, we follow the same process. The pr process looks as follows. We basically, we first we get a standardized assessment travel fitness form from the medical team in the asylum centers. Then we consult with the uh, migrant health division who gives us the fit to travel and the travel requirements such as um, medical escorts, for example. And third, the third step is the flight booking and the uh, airline medical clearance. The movement operations team in Bern books the flights and services needed for each case uh, on the request of the each case worker. The request could be, for example, a wheelchair, oxygen on board, and so on. Uh, for escorting, um, same as our French colleagues, like Chloe told you previously, we contact IOM Georgia to provide medical personnel. And lastly, um, talking about the challenges, when I compare with IOM France, for example, um, I observed that uh, there has been an increase in terminal cases, but still substance abuse cases remain the main pathology um, for returnees from Switzerland. Um, when we talk about common shared challenges, I, would, I have to mention that the lack of cooperation of medical staff is an issue. Um, also the di different treating physicians makes it difficult. And on top of that, in Switzerland, we have different speaking cantons. That means we have um, medical information in Italian, in French, in German, 
uh, in English, which makes it quite difficult to standardize it. That's definitely a big challenge. An advantage uh, of I'm Switzerland is definitely that we have only two um, airports. Uh, and this is much easier because the country is small, so we don't have too many airports. Uh, this makes it very standardized and also predictable. So this is a, definitely a logistical advantage if you have a clear routing and uh, it's not too complicated. Another advantage is that the donor is very flexible, adjusting to the migrants' needs, and uh, the donor is basically ready to fund expensive medical returns. Um, if I have to wrap up, I have to mention that we have uh, up to 10, 15 years experience with IOM Georgia. Uh, we have been working on medical returns for at least for more than a decade together since 2000, uh, 2006. And it has been a long time, which also gives us a lot of um, experience and we benefited a lot from these exchanges. And that's why we're really grateful to have been working with I'm George as well. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Nasli, for showing us the key elements and the lessons from the implementation of these programs. Very interesting to see indeed the common shared challenges. So over now to Baburian to hear more on similar practice of return and reintegration of migrants with medical conditions. Baburian is working with donors, referral agencies and service providers in IEM Germany. Prior to IEM Germany, he gained experience in migration counseling as well as international companies. So Baburian, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, I'm happy also to be here uh, as a speaker and uh, thank you to colleagues uh, who invited me to join this um, uh, webinar as a speaker. Um, I want to inform you briefly about uh, a VR program uh, from Germany to Georgia and um, we have uh, small numbers of UIM counseling centers in Germany. Uh, we work only with, uh, mainly we work with um, referral agencies um, 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 of the states or um, referral agencies of non-governmental organizations. And as soon as we receive the application, um, um, we proceed this uh, from medical point and it, uh, it will be a medical assisted, uh, evaluated uh, from um, uh, medical point and also we um, process the case then um, um, to the next stage. We always work uh, with our colleagues uh, with, uh, from UIM uh, Georgia to get the information about um, uh, follow-up treatment or uh, availability of uh, treatment and medication uh, in Georgia. And also we can support uh, the referral agencies uh, or inform the referral agencies that the returnees have a possibility to attend at uh, virtual counseling with our colleagues in uh, Georgia. It's also possible in during the uh, pre-departure process and uh, they can also re receive the information about the social impact of the uh, return and, re um, and reintegration components uh, upon arrival. Um, our colleagues in, Ge in Georgia are um, well informed about uh, our components. Um, upon arrival, uh, we can also provide within the program component uh, ground transportation um, from airport to the final destination, including amb ambulance uh, transportation if it's needed. And we request for um, uh, our cases also always uh, uh, arrival assistance if uh, the family are or family member are not av uh, available to pick up the returnee upon arrival. Uh, as you can see, we have also a reintegration component for persons for returnees with medical health condition. Uh, we call it uh, PAMA post arrival medical assistance. This com component can all, only be granted uh, to the returnees with uh, uh, complex health conditions like uh, persons with um, uh, um, complex uh, uh, psychiatric uh, health condition or uh, terminal ill uh, um, um, health condition. And uh, as you can see uh, also uh, the statistics we had um, um, in this year, uh, 28 cases uh, that returned uh, to Georgia and four of them were, were uh, escorted um, uh, within the program. and. Um, uh, 
12 of these cases received also uh, post arrival medical assistance. It was granted within uh, our program that we provide uh, in UIM Germany. And we had um, a similar situation uh, in, uh, in, like our colleagues in France, uh, we had um, um, uh, 70 cases um, last year that departed and 30 cases were also escorted. And we had also um, um, three stretcher cases uh, that uh, were departed uh, from Germany to um, uh, Georgia uh, within the program. It's uh, uh, briefly information about uh, our program. If you have uh, further questions, I can um, 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 answer your question then uh, during our webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Baburian. This was very interesting. So uh, before moving to the last intervention, I'd like to remind you that you can share your questions or comments through the chat. And uh, there will be a question answer session following the last intervention, which will be uh, the one by Dr. Yashvili, uh, who will share with us the key lessons and challenges encountered during the return and reintegration process. Dr. Yashvili is an emergency doctor and intensive care physician and the MediClub Georgia, a medical service company based in Tbilisi. And he has more than 30 years of professional experience. So Dr. Yashvili, the floor is yours. Hi, everybody. I would like, first of all, I would like to greet, send my cordial greetings to all the colleagues who are attending my uh, uh, speech. First of all, I would like to divide, uh, I, I would like to inform that I was involved only in evacuation of severe and uh, difficult medical cases. So I was not uh, involved in nurse cases and easy cases. So what I can tell you, Every procedure have its um, regulations. And as any procedure, this, this uh, evacuation could be divided into three steps, three major steps. It's pre-evaluation, before flight evaluation, in-flight management, and uh, post-management after return to Georgia. Let's shortly look to the, all the steps. First of all, the, my main problems during the pre-evaluation was uh, language problems, because most of these returnees do not speak uh, the language of the country they are living or receiving treatment. And that's why um, I think it will be worth to use the possibilities of modern technologies to carry out pre-evaluation uh, assessment with treating doctor and with patient. I think everybody nowadays has a mobile phones and it is not difficult to perform the short interview because I had some cases uh, where, for example, it was uh, ordered a stretcher case and patient couldn't tolerate the flat position and in opposite. Second step is in-flight evaluation which I would like to thank all the colleagues involved in this, uh, pro in this um, process, starting with the airport assessment in France, and uh, especially for Stumble's team, who are doing a very good job. Every time I needed uh, hospitalization in an airport clinic or assistance, they were doing very promptly, very quickly, and professionally. And the last issue is uh, treatment on report on the, upon the return. As several of my colleagues uh, mentioned here, here in Georgia, we have not very good uh, medical uh, coverage structures. And, you know, in my opinion, something should be decided uh, how to deal with this uh, patients because most of them have either terminal illness and terminal conditions or permanent invalid conditions, so permanent disability. So maybe something could be decided with donors or maybe it will be um, worth to designate one clinic, for example, who will take care of them at least ambulatory care. This is my thoughts and concerns. 
thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Dr. Yashvili, for if this If you insight. have any questions, uh, I'm ready to ask, to answer, sorry. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Yashvili. It's very interesting to hear your experience and these insights. So we have reached the last session of this webinar. We can move now to the question and answer, and I'm very happy to leave the floor to colleagues in France, Fanny Renard, Senior Project Coordinator, who with the help of Eka Badokia, Return Counselor, and Dr. Tamara Berberovic, will moderate this session and address the questions that you shared with us. So, over to you, Fanny. Merci, Francesco. Je vais faire la, la modération en, en français. Thank you, Francesco. I will moderate in French. Thank you very much for all the questions that have been asked. I think we can start with a first question for Dr. Tamara. Can you explain to, her, to us how you work with the different patient files that have a quite vague medical history, how do you deal with these cases and how do you assess the situation? Do you do it for each patient? The need for um, medical expert, escort, sorry, for um, the trouble. Thank you very much, Dr. Tamara. Thank you very much and uh, <clears throat> thank all colleagues because uh, I think that through the different uh, situations and uh, and the programs we were working together all these years, I would say. Um, as uh, within my role of uh, focal point, MHD focal point for Europe, I was uh, fully uh, covering and supporting IOM France and uh, IOM Georgia in this project. Um, what is uh, specifically different is that uh, this uh, project was targeting uh, France and Georgia directly, meaning that uh, all our efforts and the coordination were uh, tailored to these two, two countries. That was very relevant uh, because uh, I would say that uh, all the, the problems that uh, we revealed through this uh, project, uh, we tried to find the solutions as uh, I think Kathleen asked the question through the chat uh, did we identify uh, the situation and uh, the possible solutions for how to address the, the, um, the specific uh, feedbacks uh, within the country of departure, in this case, France. Um, what uh, here was very specific uh, is that, uh, as you could see, that uh, almost 40 to 50% uh, of all returnees were ter uh, terminally ill. And I would say that this statistic is fitting very much at the other countries uh, where the final destination is Georgia, meaning that uh, these uh, persons are usually with the, with the cancer in the terminal stage. And uh, what is also specific is for returnees from Switzerland, meaning that they are uh, persons with uh, substance abuse. Uh, these specific cases uh, or the specific pathology, I would say, is also tailoring the way how we are organizing this return trip, meaning that uh, the, the, the detailed investigation of uh, medical uh, files, uh, we always go through the, 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 each document of the person who applied for this return process. And through these uh, the medical uh, reports, we understand, or basically I, in this case, I understand if there is a need for uh, uh, receiving uh, more updated reports or we are uh, asking for the new report or sometimes, and I would say it is happening fairly frequently, we are uh, in direct contact with the treating physicians and uh, understanding the, the actual needs of the returnees, especially for those that are in a difficult condition. Uh, then uh, there is the point uh, where we are monitoring this uh, condition during the pre-departure phase and following any change in the, in the status. We are organizing and identifying the travel requirements and uh, we are doing that in, the, in uh, coordination with the medical escort in case that uh, I understand that there is a need for the medical escort. And uh, then we have the phase of post-arrival assistance, 
which for these uh, returns to Georgia was uh, especially relevant because as I said, uh, this is the, I would say, very important part of this project that we were having a pool of medical escorts that were Georgians, doctors and the nurses, they were uh, actual speakers of the language, which we also used for the counseling sessions or more detailed information that we needed to receive from the migrant in terms of uh, medical questions. So I think that uh, the statistic revealed that almost 50% were with the terminal uh, stage of the cancer, but also majority of them were having uh, chronic medical conditions that were uh, more or less, I would say, under the medical treatment. So we uh, paid uh, attention to each and all case, uh, depend on the, on the condition that was uh, reported. And um, uh, I think, uh, answering to Jaime's question, I think that this project was uh, very difficult from the beginning because of having this uh, very requiring group of patients. And uh, I think that uh, there are many uh, um, portions of the project where we could consider if we, if we can continue uh, how to develop uh, 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 deeply. And that part also goes to statistic of, uh, of more precise specific of the cases and the difficulties that we matched. Thank you very much. Merci, Dr. Tamara. Uh, dans le chat, nous avons une, une Thank remarque. Thank you very much, Dr. Tamara. In the chat, there is a comment by a doctor that is uh, highlighting the fact that it's essential to reassure the patients before the departure. I'm now giving the floor to my colleague, Eka Bodokia, who's a Georgian-speaking cultural mediator and return consular. I would like her to explain to us why the pre-departure advice is very important. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the floor. Yes, it is very important to speak with the patients because these are not normal people. They are ill, they are tired, and they want to make sure that everything is going well. So they need to focus on the pre-departure information. For some cases, some people don't have any social assistance. They are isolated. They don't understand the language. So it is important to talk with them and provide them with all the information they need to answer all their questions and to assure them, to tell them that in Georgia, they will be able to have the cares and they will, the cares will be funded. So that is very important. Merci beaucoup, Ika. Thank um, you very much, Ika. I am now going to give the floor to Natia from IOM Georgia. I have two specific points. Natia, can you tell us how the IOM Georgia is checking the availability of the drugs in Georgia. Do you use the tools that the EUAA is providing you with? And how do you take care of the medical follow-up in Georgia after the six months after the return? How the transfer is done towards the healthcare facilities in Georgia? Thank you very much, Natya. Okay. Uh, thanks. First of all, I have to say that after receiving pre-departure information about uh, checking some medications or availability of uh, medical treatment or for future follow-ups, we are directly contacting different doctors, pharmacies, medical institutions, and checking everything uh, on a practical way. Um, uh, this is how we check this information to give our feedback uh, to the migrant before the arrival to Georgia. 
what about what about the state insurance company? When state is a state insurance is covering uh, some part, maybe a part of uh, treatment or part of the cost of the surgery. Uh, of course, our medical reintegration budget is not used for it because the person does not have to pay for it, and uh, after. Um, completing this uh, six months period uh, upon arrival uh, from uh, sending mission, uh, we are mm, mm, making um, refer we refer them to relevant programs if available, of course. Merci, merci Natia. Um, Thank you, Natia. One question maybe for Dr. Le Luong regarding France action in order to support the medical system in Georgia. In Georgia, do you know if France has been involved in supporting actions in order to uh, help Georgian to uh, get treated in Georgia? and then not envisage the option to emigrate uh, outside Georgia to receive the corresponding medical cares. Alors, à mon niveau, je n'ai pas d'information. Well, at my, at my level, I don't have the information, I must say. During the 2020 mission that we did in Georgia before the health ministry, the idea was to put uh, the specialist services in collaboration. That means the French or the Parisian teams with the Georgian teams in order to start discussing about um, specific cases and to make sure, in particular for children, that's what we've seen in the um, pediatric oncology, to make sure, I was saying, that they are uh, adequately taken uh, care when they are returning. However, I don't think that any formalization happened at that level. This is the only information I have. Nonetheless, I see, I know that an assessment project is happening regarding the sanitary uh, reasons for migration within the European Union. That's uh, something that our Swiss colleague has have been reporting. And I think this assessment study could be interesting for us in order to take the correct measures to make sure that uh, Georgian can uh, get treated in their country of origin. Thank you, Dr. Le Luong. We also have a question for Chloé. Concerning the difficult access to specialists in the pre-departure assistance, this is some difficulty that has been shared by uh, several countries. Uh, for instance, the IOM Swiss, Switzerland and the IOM Germany have referred that. So have you been able to find some solution to tackle this challenge? I'm sorry that I cannot give you a perfect answer on, the, on that topic. It is indeed a difficulty that we've been facing up to the end of the project. So maybe I could give you some clues. We couldn't share with you the detailed statistics, but if we go back to the slide shared by Dr. Le Long, uh, showing uh, the density mapping for the applications of uh, Georgian, we do find the same mapping as well. We've tried to be working on a more ongoing basis with several regions in France, and it's been easier when we worked with the physicians that have already been working with us on the first return, uh, so they could uh, fulfill the uh, medical report or, uh, or take some patient visits. So it was easier to have a list of physician partners that could then refer the applicants towards some specialists. It was ideal, let's say, to have uh, an ongoing collaboration. 
niveau de l'OIM en Europe, nous n'avons pas de présence sur tout le territoire. We are not present all over the territory. So those uh, the persons who have been assisted have all been assisted or supported by the office in Paris. So we had to have local partners and it depended on the territory. You could have uh, NGOs that were supporting the um, the migrants or social assistance. Uh, assistant that depended on uh, uh, municipalities and local authorities. The social assistant could make a follow-up and be with the beneficiaries and could help us to uh, to make uh, specialist appointments for the applicants. It is indeed a challenge that was going way beyond our project because in France already the access to specialists is difficult in rural areas for everybody. I mean, not only for migrants. So I hope I could give you some clues, however. Merci beaucoup, Chloé. Um, donc Thank you very reste... much, uh, Chloé. We're going to stop the Q&A session. We understand that several questions uh, didn't find any answer. So we'll be able to give an answer on the platform. Et je laisse la parole maintenant à mon, à mon collègue Francesco. And now I share, I give the floor to my uh, colleague Francesco. You participated and contributed to this very active conversation. So the conversation, as mentioned by Fanny, now goes online. Please do not hesitate to register to the platform's community and join the thematic group Return. The link will appear shortly in the chat. And under this thematic group, you will find a dedicated forum uh, where to share comments, experience, and where to find the answers to the questions that we were not able to unfortunately answer today. So just before leaving the session, it would be great if you could take a few seconds of your time to respond to the poll that will appear shortly on your screen. As a last information, let me remind you that the recording of the webinar will be shortly available on the return or integration platform. So we have reached the end of the conversation today. We really hope that the description of this innovative practice has been of your interest. Please do not hesitate to contact us for more information. I would like to thank again all the speakers, Dr. Leluang, Dr. Yashvili, and all the colleagues in Tbilisi, Paris, uh, Berlin, Bern, who helped on the organization and moderation is really has been a collaborative effort so thank you so much again on behalf of the knowledge management alp i wish you a good rest of your day thank you so much again